Hi there, I'm John Williams. I'm from Charter Communications and I'm here at the Cable Labs 10G demo. We have a couple exciting things to show you. We've created a few more tools for the toolkit that will allow operators to be able to have options when and if those options are needed. The first thing I'm going to show you is the SCTE gap. This is the culmination of a bunch of vendors and a bunch of MSOs coming together to figure out how to build the ultimate gap housing node. What the greatest thing about this is, is this is an open standard. So if you think about it, it's like open source code. So the standards are open. There are two different standards. One standard is the SCTE standard for the housing itself. The other standard is the standard for the in and out board that allows the communication. And what this does, it allows anybody to build a module. Even if I wanted to build a module, I could build a module for the gap. You are no longer tied to a proprietary node vendor. This gives you the flexibility to be able to modify this device anytime you want to. So once it's in there, you could be using it, say, as a traditional node. If you want to put uh, RPD in it, a remote FI device in it, you can do that. If you feel that you need to serve fiber to the home, you just can place a module in and it'll do fiber to the home out of the same enclosure. It also will support modules for wireless. It has the ability to support compute for the future in case we ever need to in the next 20 years drive that compute closer to the customer. We have the full flexibility for this. I believe this is a great partnership between the MSOs and the vendor community coming together to create a standard that builds a housing that allows anybody to operate in it. This is going to be very beneficial to the MSO operators. I'm very proud to say that it's now a standard and Charter was one of the ones that helped drive the effort, but there were multiple groups included. Now that I've shown you the gap, I'm going to show you the next tool that we've created for the toolkit. What I'm going to show you next is a Node Plus 4 cascade, and what we've built is an actual HFC-like network. We've emulated everything all the way to the end of the line. And now I'm going to walk you through the different devices. The second demo is the DOCSIS 4.0 FDD demonstration. Partnering with several vendors, we've been able to put together a replication of what would be a Node Plus 4 cascade in the HFC network. First, we'll talk about the VESIMA node. The VESIMA node is supporting a DOCSIS 4.0 remote Mac Fi device. It supports 1.8 on the RF. It supports different types of splits. It has a pluggable diplex filter, so an operator, if they choose to select a different split, they will have the ability to do that. What we've done for this demonstration is we've selected a 684 upstream and a 1794 downstream. The ability to be able to change that split does exist. You can select different upstreams and different downstreams, but for this demo, we wanted to show full capacity on an upstream and downstream. This node right here is operating at under 68 dB of TCP, total composite power. The way we were able to accomplish that is we did a 3 dB step down at 1412. Now, stepping down at 1412 may or may not be the most optimal. We don't know that yet. This is prototype silicon, but when we get the final GA version, we'll be able to do more testing to see where the optimal step down is. It could be somewhere around 1218. The other thing to note about this node is it's fully auto controlled. There are no pads and EQs in it. Everything is set up remotely. The launch mer out of the node is greater than 48 dB which gives us good, good quality signal to feed our cascade. What we did then was we wanted to simulate what's real. And as you can see, a squirrel, we put that in. Uh, but we simulated the cable. Instead of bringing in big rolls of 500 cable, we decided to use RG6. And what we did is we, we factored in what the attenuation loss was to create a true simulation of what exists out there in our HFC networks. Now the amplifiers are drop-in modules, and what a drop-in module is, is it's a module that can go into a housing that we already have out there. So the days of respacing and pulling out all your old 
actives are gone. Everything's a module now. This is a pretty nice technology. Again, this technology here also uses full remote control for setting up. It, it allows a user not to have to have pads and EQs for it. It has full 1.8 capabilities. The power consumption, which is very important, what we found is the power consumption is very comparable to what exists today in one gigahertz amplifiers. And a lot of that's based on the advancements in technologies and the new silicon to be able to keep that power ratio down. So that, that's been a great asset. And so what we did from the first amp is we simulated what it would be a 500 to the spacing to the next amp. We did that again and we did that again. This is a Node Plus 4 cascade. From the amplifier, we fed four different taps. We have a tap down here, and then we have taps up here, and this is our end-of-line tap. Again, there is cable simulating what the distances would be out in the street in between the taps. All in all, we've got about a mile of HFC network here that we've simulated. And we thought that it was important to be able to simulate what the performance would be dropping in this equipment into an existing HFC network as, it, as it's out there today. We also have a 100-foot drop. The 100-foot drop is the standard 100-foot drop that feeds the customer premise. It goes over to a DOCSIS 4.0 cable modem where I'm going to hand off to my partner from Charter. Hi, I'm Matt Peterson with Charter Communications, and I'm going to show you on the DOCSIS 4.0 FDD demo, some of the performance of uh, what we're seeing on this whole setup that John Williams just took you through. So here on the analyzer, we have five OFDM blocks in the downstream. So on the far left side, you're gonna see uh, the first OFDM block start at 834 megahertz, and it goes all the way up to 1794 megahertz. On the third block, starting from the left, moving to the right, you'll notice the signal drops roughly 3 dB. So this signal drop is what John was talking about where we do a step down, and it's a 3 dB step down at 1412 megahertz. And we did this to keep the total composite power of the existing plant the same as it is today. Each one of these uh, OFDM blocks are running 4K QAM, uh, and the overall performance that we're seeing at the end of the line, so like John showed you on the whole demo, the end of the line is the last active, last tap, and that's where the cable modem is plugged in. So here at the cable modem, right now today, in this demo, we are seeing anywhere from 40 to 43 dB of modulation error rate. That is a great signal coming through a four, four amp cascade. I'm gonna show you now uh, what a 4K QAM constellation looks like on the analyzer. So here on the analyzer, you can see a 4K QAM uh, modulation uh, as it's running today. So what's occurring in the demo is we have a speed test server running, and it's uh, cycling through uh, the downstream portion of the speed test, it's cycling through the upstream portion of the speed test, and then it's doing a bi-directional test. Um, and so this is, uh, as that traffic is being generated, you'll notice here, uh, this is the actual 4K QAM modulation, and on either side of the modulation, you can actually see the pilot carriers. I'm going to go and show you what the upstream looks like now. So I'm just going to go over here to this amplifier and move my connection. And then on the analyzer, I'm just going to switch it over to see the upstream. So right now, what we're, what's occurring is we're waiting for the upstream traffic to actually generate from the cable modem on the upstream. Uh, so right now, there's no OFDMA carriers. And here shortly, uh, you're going to see all the OFDMA carriers. So what you actually see here is all the traffic running. On the, uh, on the far left side, it starts at 5 megahertz and it goes all the way up to 85 megahertz. There's a 23 megahertz guard band between 85 and 108. That's for the uh, second transmit chain in the modem. And then it goes all the way from 108 all the way up to 684 megahertz. So what we have here is six full blocks, 96 megahertz wide, of OFDMA, plus the one OFDMA carrier down uh, between 5 and 85, which is 72 megahertz. 
And uh, the beautiful thing is all these carriers are running 4K QAM. So what does that mean? That means we're getting a lot of capacity out of the system today. So I'm gonna switch over to the speed test server to show you what capacities we're actually achieving. And so right now this is on a bi-directional test and this is gonna cycle through downstream, upstream, bi-directionally. So right now, oh, it just switched on me. So here we go. So on, right now on the downstream, we're seeing 8.9 gigabits of traffic on the downstream. And that's all going uh, to our uh, cable modem here. It's got a 10 gig ethernet link uplinked into the uh, speed test server and it's a, a cyclic loop uh, through the modem to the node all the way down the amp cascade and back to the modem. And now it just switched over to the upstream side. So now we're seeing 6.1 to 6.2 gigabits of traffic. And this is, this is a, a real speed test server. So this is what a customer would actually see in production uh, if we were to run this, if, if they can find a speed test server that can actually uh, achieve these. So it's very difficult to get these uh, speed test servers being able to provide the uh, right performance. And so right now we're seeing a bi-directional test. This is running at 8.9 gigabits down, 6.16, 6.12 uh, gigabits on the upstream. And this is bi-directionally, simultaneously, all going down to this cable modem. Uh, and that's some great capacity. One thing to note with the capacity is because we're doing a 684 split uh, with uh, 1794 on the downstream, we are actually maxing out the full capability of this cable modem. If an operator chooses to do a less uh, split, meaning a 300 megahertz split or a 396 megahertz split or a 492 megahertz split, now you just freed up additional ca capacity on the downstream side to have additional OFDM blocks running there. So if a operator decided to choose 396 versus a 684, we can get another two additional OFDM blocks, and we can take that 8.9 gigabits of capacity on the downstream north of 10 gigabits, closer to 12 gigabits on the downstream. Now, obviously, you're going to do a trade-off on your upstream speed, but even at a 396 uh, megahertz um, split ratio, uh, you're still achieving roughly four gigabits of raw capacity and uh, you could easily offer a two and a half gig tier, upstream uh, service tier with that type of capacity. So this is our demo and uh, thank you for joining me.